Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series. Now, whilst this is certainly not the first Tactical Breakdown, which is the show in which we take an analytical and statistical look at different types of Arsenal matches and players, and we've done plenty over the summer looking at Arsenal's transfer targets like David Luiz and Kieran Tierney and Pepe, which you can still go and check out and find out everything you possibly would need to know about the, the the signings that we've made but this is the first in a brand new series which is going to be taking a tactical look at the Premier League fixtures throughout the season now I say Premier League because of course whilst myself and the people who I'm going to be joined with which is of course Drew which is at FM Lera on Twitter uh, and Graham Brooks which you can also find on Twitter um, whilst I'd love for us to be able to do uh, one of these after every game, I can't make those promises at the moment. Of course, we have full-time jobs. And whilst I'm still producing this content for you as I'm on holiday with this awful lighting and weird surround uh, that not, you're not particularly used to, uh, we are going to try in uh, the best capacity that we can to put these out for you every single week about a Premier League fixture minimum. And maybe we'll see where things go, but hopefully we'll be get some more and we'll see this content evolve. But for today's show... We are focused, of course, on the game which we completed at the weekend for the first game of the season against Newcastle, in which we won 1-0 on Tyneside. Now, if you are enjoying the series, please, of course, give it a like. Please subscribe if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss any of our shows. Um, but let's dive straight in. Now, what I want to do is, of course, start this show with a positive, and that is, of course, look at who I feel was the most instrumental in the fixture, and that being our man of the match. Now, you can clearly see from the thumbnail on your screen that I believe that man is Matteo Genduzzi, the young Frenchman, was instrumental in Arsenal's win against Newcastle this season. He was dynamic, he was energetic, his passing was excellent, and we're going to look at some of the facts and statistics that prove those. So we start off initially with his heat map. Now, you can see his heat map there. He is all over the place, and whilst he played on the right-hand side of that pivot two against, or next to Xhaka, uh, he moved all around the pitch, driving the ball forward, taking the ball centrally, pushing into the opposition's half. Even you can see in the bottom right-hand corner there, getting back and covering Ainsley Maitland-Niles when he pushed on ahead of those wingers and got into those positions, which ultimately led to Arsenal's goal with Ainsley Maitland-Niles getting in behind. And it was Genduzzi's cover that enabled him to do that and play with more freedom and know that he is secure at the back with Genduzzi covering. But Genduzzi was so proactive with his passing and his passing was so secure, he made 66 passes in the game and completed 62 of those with a 94% pass accuracy. And what you can see from the arrows on the screen there is that most of those passes were in a more positive manner. He wasn't playing passively. He was accurately passing those balls really, really well and using them in a way that kept the play ticking over, something that we've lacked in our side since Santi Cazorla has not been in here. And, and, and uh, Genduzzi was absolutely fantastic in, in that position and pushing our play forwards and keeping it moving and keeping it as free-flowing and fluid as possible. He also was really effective with his, uh, with his pass into the final third. You can see there of the eight that he tried, seven of those were completed, and they were usually either out to the far left or to the far right, enabling our full-backs or wing-backs, or of course our wide players being Mkhitaryan and Nelson at the time, and of course Aubameyang when he drifted over. All of those were used to great effect. You can see here in the graphic, he's pushing forward, he's moved into a central position, and he's passing the ball through to his, his teammates. Here you've got an opportunity where he's passing out to Ainsley Maitland. Niles is able to run into space and hopefully get a ball in behind. Playing those balls key through players confidently, a young player with no lack in confidence whatsoever, passing through Newcastle midfielders and forward players accurately to his teammates and finding them very, very easily. Here again in a more deeper position and arguably more risky to play this ball between the Newcastle midfield. He's easily finding Joe Willock, who's ahead of him, on a much more regular occasion. So for me, Genduzzi won that. Uh, man of the match slot for sure I thought he was absolutely brilliant in the game and I'm hoping to see that continue in the next game against Burnley but of course we have to look at sometimes the areas where Arsenal weren't so good and I think there were some causes for concern especially in terms of how much freedom we gave Newcastle in terms of their crossing now in the game we allowed them to get 11 crosses uh, at our defence most of those as you can see from the graphic on your screen were taken um, from very wide positions uh, in fact, uh, eight of those 11 were done from those positions. And you can see there that they were only successful on three occasions. But the fact that they're getting all these balls into the box and so far into the box create problems. We know that aerially we've been challenged in the past. And it's something that we're definitely vulnerable with. Jolotin had a fantastic chance to put the Magpies ahead and couldn't quite 
do the job but it's definitely something that we need to look at if you look and see this example here we've got Javi Manquillo on the ball on the right hand side Nacho Monreal is nowhere near the Spanish right fullback to close him down not stopping that ball into the box again Matt Ritchie is in a lot of space and he's unable to be the uh, a pass is unable to be played to him and Mkhitaryan isn't even looking at him he's looking at trying to close down the player that's making the pass instead of covering the player it's Joe Willock's job to close down that passing player and it's Mkhitaryan's job to try and close down the possible passing lanes that are available to him and he just didn't do that and that meant uh, that meant that Richie was easily able to find the ball into the box which nearly meant we conceded to Jolliton's header you've also got this uh, this effect in the 89th the 90th minute so we didn't really correct this throughout the game it was a, a process that was increasing throughout and Jetro Willems new signing from uh, from Frankfurt for Newcastle really good Dutch left back came into the side and was easily putting those balls into the box not challenged in that space you can see the area around him there very very easy for him to put those ball into the box but it was also the passes that were opportunities now none of these came off successfully but we really need to be watching out for the crosses that were being put in from a much much deeper position more near the halfway line you've got an opportunity for Paul Dummett here the players in this moment in the 29th minute Willock and Mkhitaryan are closing him down but later in the match in the 63rd minute Richie is not being closed down by those three players in the yellow shirts there and is able to swing a ball straight into the box which could have been really dangerous and in the 83rd minute Javi Manquillo again really not being closed down Nacho Monreal can't cut the player uh, can't close the player down because he's got a player to watch on their right hand side Mkhitaryan very lackadaisically not closing down and the Armenian didn't have the best of games on Tyne's side we're then going to have a look at a lack of direct now this is where I'm going to pass over to my good friend Drew who's going to give his say on a few things tactically but mainly on a lacking of directness from the Arsenal side so I wanted to talk about not necessarily something tactical today but more so something within our tactics that we may be struggling with. Um, still, even though it's match day, it was match day one, obviously, for me still, we're pretty hesitant on um, our ability to decipher when we need to be direct and when we need to hold possession and build play, particularly through, you know, Granite Jack and, and considering us at Newcastle, um, and Teo Guendouzi. Um, I think for me, Striking that balance more efficiently and more effectively this season couldn't be more important than ever, considering you know our full strength eleven could easily see um, Aubameyang and Nicola Pepe both on the flanks with um, Alexandre Lacazette at, at center forward. Um, it's important to really utilize their strengths. Both players are direct. Um, they have a lot of pace. Um, trying to hit Lacazette. Um, with a direct pass rather than through build-up play would allow all three of them to really utilize the space in behind um, opposition defenses and not allow them that opportunity to really establish those deep blocks that we so often struggle with. Um, and same thing for, you know, playing the likes of Mesut Ozil and, and Danny Ceballos and even Joe Willock, who are direct players. Um, they can obviously play in the system where possession is king, but um, if we're trying to really get the maximum out of these players truly, then I think we need to be more direct. And there are certain points in a Newcastle performance where um, I can particularly remember a moment where um, Reese Nelson um, beat two of his markers on the ball, uh, and instead of taking the space that was afforded to him after he successfully completed the dribbles, he laid it off to Granit Xhaka, and, and we kept building play. Instances like that, for me, you, know, you look at the teams like City and Liverpool, when their space ahead of them, they take it. Because really, at that point, you're focusing on making defenders make choices. Either they have to step and then more space is created or they have to lay off you and another scoring opportunity might present itself from maybe a little bit deeper but um, one chance will still present itself so I think for me that's what's important. Um, another Emory this season I think that has to be highlighted for sure and if it does then um, I think it could be even more successful than we really think. So. Playing directly has always been something that Arsenal have really struggled with. We've been so conservative in the play that we've needed to do, passing it around the edge of the box patiently until we find that key pass that Arsenal need to make in order to find that key ball in behind and obviously get one of either Lacazelle or Bamiyong in behind for that key that key chance is going to win us the game. But Arsenal do need to be more direct in games and Drew highlights that. We're going to have a look through some of the examples there 
Um, Aubameyang on this chance is, is clearly available to play a ball possibly in for home for Nelson to run beyond the defenders, but he holds onto the ball for too long and that allows the Newcastle defender to come in, close him down and ultimately win the ball back and the chance goes amiss. We've got another chance here and Nelson was really one of those players that I know he's young and I know that he wants to impress and that also means that he wants to keep a possession, he doesn't want to make mistakes, he doesn't want to lose possession, but sometimes you have to be a little bit more risky in order to win some of these games and you can see in this chance in the 24th minute he could be playing that ball in between Chelvy and the other Newcastle midfielder in behind to find Willock who's running through very easily but instead he chooses the option to go very safe to Nacho Monreal and you can see the frustration there in Willock making that run and it's not being found and that clearly has irritated him there again Nelson on that left hand side he's got the ball he's taken he's shifted the Newcastle players uh, using their weight and his dribbling his low centre of gravity to get some space he's now able to ping a ball where he's had three Arsenal players run into the box and make themselves available but instead he chooses to pass a more passive ball backwards out to the edge of the uh, the midfield for Granit Xhaka especially in the highlight that, that Drew was talking about and then there's another one here he could play that ball into the box but instead he chooses to play it back after being pressured by Newcastle because he's just not quick enough in that moment and that really was sort of a telling tale that we didn't create enough from those chances that we made for ourselves because we were just too passive in those moments. Now I'm going to pass on uh, to Graham Brooks, who also joins us for the tactical breakdown each week. Now Graham's going to talk about two different instances. He's going to talk about how the fullbacks were uh, effective and how we're talking about them uh, evolving from last season. And also talking about how uh, Mkhitaryan and Reese Nelson's driving ability through the midfield more centrally meant that Aubameyang was actually forced out into positions he maybe shouldn't have been. I think one of the changes we will see this year is the way Arsenal build up play in attacking areas. It was noticeable on Sunday with Newcastle playing a 3-5-2 shape that the midfield pivot two of Jacka and Gunduzi were, were beating the press by playing the ball forward centrally where the wide forwards Mkhitaryan and Nelson were receiving the ball turning and driving at the Newcastle defence. This was different from last season when Arsenal were playing out wide to the wide forwards who were coming inside uh, for the fullbacks to create the overload. I think on Sunday what we saw with Nelson and Mkhitaryan making the runs was that uh, Aubameyang was often pulling out wide and Willock was obviously having to change his positioning. But overall I think Emery has gone with this 4-2-3-1 shape this season in pre-season and I think he's looking for his wide forwards to literally receive the ball turn and run at pace at opposition defences. Beginning with Graham's first point talking about the fullbacks, you can actually see on your screen now the heat maps from Nelson and Mkhitaryan, you can see them being drifted more inside into a central area uh, than you would usually see. There's no real heat going towards that byline, which you would usually see um, from players that are more naturally uh, weighted on their on their stronger foot to the side that they're akin to. So a right winger being more right foot and a left winger being more left foot. Of course, Mkhitaryan is right footed, but he's not a very speedy winger. He's not an out and out winger. And so he doesn't add that game to his play. Um, whereas Nelson is a right-footed and playing on the left wing, which is why we see him cut inside a lot more and take the ball back. And we saw him giving away balls in more passive ways than being more direct. And we talked about that with Drew. If you now look at the heat mats with Monreal and Maitland-Niles, you can see how tucked against the side of, of the field that they are, uh, especially Monreal, very, very close to the touchline, especially in the opposition half, was more heat. He actually surprised me of how forward and direct and, and, and positive he was with his play. Uh, which was really interesting to see. But actually looking at some of the graphics of what Graham's talking about in his second point, seeing how the shape of the team changes based upon how the wide players perform. We saw a couple of those graphics whilst, uh, whilst Graham was talking, but I want to re-highlight uh, this first one here where you can see Mkhitaryan start to drive through. Aubameyang then pushes out wide. And you've got this instance with further into the play where then he's so far out wide that you've got Joe Willock has to adjust his position to play as basically the centre forward. Reese Nelson, of course, shadowing him in behind to be available for the wider cross. Um, and Aubameyang doesn't actually manage to get a decent ball in this scenario because he's just not that guy. He's not a creator. He should be the one in the middle. And that's certainly something that Arsenal need to be aware of. Now, with Pepe and when Pepe comes in, we'd hope to see... Um, this happen less often in Aubameyang or Lacazette being definitely more central. Um, but if it is Aubameyang and Pepe playing as inverted wingers, maybe we will see this happen a lot more. Uh, the striker getting a lot closer to his wide forwards to try and accept the play and try and link up a bit more. 
Um, but hopefully we'll see Aubameyang or Lacazette, whoever plays central, stick to that clear position. You've got another example here where Aubameyang is pushing out left, where Nelson's been received the ball more centrally again. Nacho Monreal is uh, trying to overlap on the wide. And again, we're left with two players that aren't accomplished finishers in the middle, um, like Aubameyang is, and nowhere near his ability are left with the responsibility to be that person and be that player when they're just not akin to that. Again, Nacho Monreal has the chance to overlap here, but the ball is played inside to Nelson, who's come uh, inside centrally. Aubameyang is then instinctively pushing out slightly wide again to possibly receive another pass through, which makes it harder for him to score on either his weaker foot or he would need to take more time to put it onto his right. But there's definitely areas that we can improve on and I think that was really clear to see in what Graham was saying there. And that pretty much concludes what we want to talk about today. Of course, there is so many things going on within those 90 minutes that we could literally spend an hour talking about all the issues and the positives and the, and the negatives. But there's only so much we can. But I hope you've really enjoyed this breakdown and this taster of what you might see moving forward. If you've got any feedback for, uh, for us, of course, we always appreciate that. And please do leave it in the comments. Um, but if you've enjoyed this, please, of course, subscribe and leave those notifications on. You can follow the boys on Twitter. All their information is going to be in the description. And follow us on Twitter as well, at the Guna Talk TV. We'll see you again very, very soon for the next tactical breakdown after the Burnley fixture. We really hope you've enjoyed the show. And as always, up the Arsenal.